Hey guys, Chris Murphy here. We're here with Mr. Mike Sokolin, who is a public speaker, trainer, and he's gonna give you his best tips on how to be a very confident public speaker and also just in general, being a more confident person, getting across um, your, your best self. So Mike, yes. take it away. Yes, so um, for me, there's eight pillars to public speaking. And I'll speak about this in a couple of minutes, but the first and foremost important element is vulnerability. Now, from the classes that I run, I always encourage everybody to be vulnerable, which is actually not the thing that everybody expects because we usually associate vulnerability with weakness. So people think, well, how do, how do I, what do you mean be weak? And funny enough that through accepting ourselves in expressing weakness, we find some, you know, some joy, some, some comfort being able to express ourselves without thinking too much. So being vulnerable is extremely important. That's the sort of, I guess the philosophy that I'd underline with everything. And within that, there's eight elements. I don't know if you'd like me to... So, so in terms of vulnerability is what you're saying, that's just where you are. And then it's like, it's like the foundation. So if you're never vulnerable and you're just always putting this front up, you just, it's like building this um, massive tower exactly. on no foundation. Exactly. And it down. Exactly. It's like using a mask. You know, We all have these characters that we've developed throughout the years of people that we'd like to be seen as. We have a lot of, a lot of layers in front of us. And the more we strip through that to get to the core of that child, that inner child that's sitting inside who's actually scared and lost, the more we can connect to ourselves, the true selves, you know? Through that we can build real confidence. I feel like that's like a more sustainable way, you Definitely. know, of building confidence. As opposed to putting in more layers and more layers, we first need to get rid of the layers that we've learned throughout the years to connect to the sort of heart of who we are. And then from that we can develop all the other things that go on top. Obviously, vulnerability is the style, right? You connect to your vulnerability, you give yourself the freedom to express yourself with whoever it is that you are today. And then from that place, we put on the eight pillars of public speaking. Now, I believe there's eight of them and it all starts with a breath. Why is breathing important? When we get nervous, when we get anxious, we forget to breathe. We tense up, we don't breathe. And we kind of create this very nerve-wracking physical experience for ourselves. And we can easily alleviate that just by taking a deep breath. And the way to do that is to engage your diaphragm so that you're breathing from the belly. When you guys are about to go to sleep, when you're very relaxed, when you're sitting and chilling somewhere, you're naturally breathing from your belly. But we forget to do that when we come up on stage a lot of the time because tension builds up. So the best way to breathe is essentially to give yourself that freedom to breathe from the belly so that it fully expands. Once we take that breath, then comes in the pace. How quickly or how slowly do we speak? That, funny enough, isn't something that you think about. You simply connect to your breath and your diaphragm naturally has the capacity to squeeze itself when you get excited and that changes the pace, that changes the speed of how we speak, or it loosens up when we speak slower, when we speak with more reassurance and more confidence. Um, and that, again, varies according to the breaths that we take. We then have the voice. The voice, of course, is something that arises itself from the pace. So once I took a deep breath, I fueled and used my breath to express the message at hand. I then articulate that by using my voice. Uh, projecting the voice is, is important. Uh, the one thing that I've learned from performing in theaters and from training as an actor is to always aim to talk to the row at the back of the of whatever environment is that you're speaking in, so that obviously your voice can be heard, and that's very important. On the second, uh, yes, and then the body language. What is the body language about? We don't think about our hands when we speak. When you think about it, if you come speak to a friend and you wanna share something, you're not thinking about your hands, you're just jumping in and you're like, hey, you know, I did this thing, that I did, and your hands are doing all that magical work. The same thing needs to be reflected when we speak in public, so that we th we're taking a breath and we're grounding ourselves physically and then we're thinking about the message and the stuff that we need to say. And from that, our hands then start doing the work. You know, mm -hmm. so it's not something that we consciously process. Because you can see that when a speaker is conscious about their hands, they start doing uh, stuff that feels unnatural, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, just don't think about your hands. Let them be. And then they express themselves at ease. But of course, there's a second part to this, which is extremely important. And that's the mind. Now, the mind is the intention. Every single speaker has an intention before they speak. In some occasions, that might be an educational setting. Your, your in intention might be to educate people. In other settings, it might be to inspire people, uh, to motivate people, and so on and so forth. So every single setting that you're going to be speaking in is going to require a different kind of intention. It's extremely important to have it because that also connects to your why. So that when you go up on stage, the one question that you need to be asking yourself is, 
why am I here? What is it that I want to share? And connecting to that why is what gives us presence and gives us weight to unreveal the message. And what I would say as well is mm. uh, just in terms of an interaction with someone, if you just meet someone in a shop or something, you start a conversation, is the intention. Do you generally want to speak to this person? Do you generally want to make this person feel good about themselves, compliment something? And that's why I guess all this other stuff is important. But without this, it, there's no emotion, there's no, it's, it's more fakeness. It know? is, it is for sure. But also on touching what you said with communication, if you're sort of speaking to someone in public, if it's a one-to-one -one conversation, mm. the intention works a little bit differently. Okay. Yeah, so I wouldn't say that you would sort of have an intention. You would, um, if you, your intention in a sort of one-to-one -one conversation would be more about willing to connect to the person, yes? Instead of having an agenda of kind of thinking like, oh, I want to make this person laugh mm. or I want to make this person think this, the best way to approach communication one-on-one -on -one is to actually drop that desire and to have the intention or the desire to simply connect and to listen. You so know what I mean? The intention is connection. Basically. The intention in this case is connection and public speaking because we're delivering a speech, right? We've got a message, we've got a desire to share the message to the audience, which is different to if we're speaking to someone one-on-one. -on -one. Ideally, uh, of course, depending on the setting, right? It might be a sales environment, then of course intention applies to it. But if it's purely for communication purposes, yeah. if you're willing to just connect to someone, get to know them better, uh, then, of course, dropping that intention is the best way so that you're actually listening and seeing what the person is telling you. Because a lot of the time we have an intention, we're not even hearing what the person is saying. We're kind of yeah. filtering all that through lens. So it's like, I'm listening to you, but I'm kind of expecting something. And, and as soon as you say that, but I'm like, oh yeah, that's interesting. So I'm waiting to respond, you know, according to what I think needs to be said. Whereas dropping this filter and actually looking at someone, actually listening to what they're saying, can really stem a beautiful way of communicating. You know, there's something, there's something that's in the moment about that. It's like we're both discovering this conversation by listening to each other mm. and growing it one by one. You know, I think that, that works very well for one-to-one -one stuff, yeah. Definitely, and I think like you're saying, in terms of trying to make someone laugh, if you're on stage and you're trying to make someone laugh, most stand-up comedians, when they try to like start, they're, they're terrible because it's just, it's, they're trying too hard. Whereas exactly. they actually use all this other stuff, they're more relaxed and, and, and it, they will naturally it will come out you know, as part of their style. Exactly, exactly. That's the first step you learn in stand-up. If the funnier you try to be, the more you want everybody to laugh, uh, people can sense that you're trying to do something to them. They don't like that. You know, people don't like to be, they don't like to feel like they're, they're trying to be forced or pushed mm -hmm. into something. And what makes a, a comedian, specifically stand-up funny, is when they just surrender to, uh, to whatever there is. And people laugh at the reactions that they have to their stuff, you know? So it's not a question of sort of forcing it or what you're feeling about feeling it, you know? And if it's funny, you're kind of laughing and then everyone else laughs, right? If it's sad, then you kind of go into this place where it's a bit sad and people laugh more that reaction, which is also important, yeah. Mm, for sure. And uh, I mean, just touching on, on, top, on, on top of that, leading from the intention, there's three other elements. Um, emotions, tone, and content. Now, emotions is feeling what you're saying, right? It's much more powerful to speak from your heart than to speak from your mind. Because as much thinking and as much analysis as we do, there's only a certain level to how high we can go with it. But the second we drop that mind, the second we leave our body, we just connect to the heart, there's something really tasty there, something full of feeling there. You know, and speaking from that place really gives it that weight. So emotions are also very important. Then the tone um, is that variety, right? A lot of people want to have sort of different melodies to how they speak. And the only way we can have a different melody is once again through feeling what we need to say first. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you think about. Once again, like the body language, you don't think about your tone. You don't just suddenly speak louder because it doesn't work, but you allow yourself to feel the content that you're sharing and the tone naturally can vary from that, from your emotions, essentially. And just to sort of finish the eighth element, the content as well, right? How can we make content interesting? The way I look at it, there's only two things to content. Structure, which is making sure that it's easy to digest. There's a clean cut introduction. There's a body where you're discussing something and a conclusion. I like to say it to my students as what, how, and why. What are you speaking about? Um, how does it matter? And what can we do about it? Or what is it that you're speaking about? Why is it important? And how should we react? Or what we should do about it? So sort of what, how, and why works very well as well um, in terms of making the content easy to digest. And the second side to it is the quality of what we're saying. It's extremely important that as speakers or even if it's just communicating with people on the street, we are making it engaging by making it interesting. That means adding a lot of details, really painting that picture with the words that you're using because an audience love to see 
Um, they love to see pictures when they're, when, they're, when they're hearing speeches. They love to paint the stuff in their minds, you know? So content, making it engaging and interesting is extremely important as well. The more detail there is, the easier it is for an audience to see what it is that you're speaking about. I'd say these are the, the eight elements. Excellent. So if it was to go forward now and someone wants to be a lot more confident and, and this doesn't, obviously it's not, this is coming from a speaking point of view, which applies into all areas. It's just, I think speaking allows us to really be able to analyze people on stage and stuff. And we don't probably get a chance to see people in there every day. Would you say that it's, it's a case of just focusing on maybe one particular area for now? Or is it just that these two are so key focus on maybe these two. Yeah, a good point. I mean, I'd say um, you can sort of isolate them. You know, you can't just say, just do this, don't do that. I feel like mm -hmm. they go hand in hand. If you just did sort of the physical stuff, you breathe, your body language is good, but there wasn't much feeling, emotions to it, much intention, then there'll be something missing. Yeah. So I'd say, I'd say starting off with these two, these are kind of like the things that open up the desire to speak, the breath, yeah, I take that breath and from which I'm then gonna use my voice to articulate myself and the mind, yeah? So for me, kind of in terms of practicing and getting these elements into place, it's starting off with that breath, with that intention and the kind of seed then grows mm -hmm. from that, you know? Yeah, because what I found, I think when I don't breathe, am I right in thinking that the pace goes very fast? Exactly, the pace goes very, very fast. Online, so, and then your body language tens, tenses up. Exactly, exactly. And you're saying, if, obviously if you breathe more, it's just, a lot more relaxed. Exactly. And, and you can slow down. And, and I guess you can probably speed up a bit, um, but that's, you obviously don't want to be doing that the whole time. Exactly. And once again, if you want to speed up, that arises from your breath. Because naturally, mm -hmm. when you get a little bit excited, your breathing quickens up and that creates yeah. that pace. It goes quicker. But it comes from the breathing. And like you mentioned, for sure, when you're feeling tension, if you ever feel like a lot of people get that shaking sensations, we heard that today, right? Yeah. People, knees shaking, or maybe sometimes the face shakes. That's simply because there's a lack of oxygen in the body. So the quickest way to obviously relieve that is ah, that deep breath. And that feels good. You know, when you take that deep breath, you just kind of feel like, oh, wow, I feel relaxed now. That's so important, for sure. Excellent. Right. Everybody. To start breathing. <laughs> yeah, to start breathing. And Mike, I guess quickly you could talk about your sort of taster course for here in London and um, the, the sort of the structured course you do as well. Yeah, for sure. So um, we essentially, well, we have taster classes that we run every, every two months uh, to get people to sort of try this out, see what it's about, see if it works for them. And then if it does work for them, if you guys like it, if you feel like you want more training, we have courses as well that we run back to back. Uh, there's different types. There's a five week course and there's an eight week course. And the, essentially they differ in the pace that you want to learn. In. So uh, I used to call it beginners and intermediate, as you know, but I've change that because I've realized it's more about you as in how quickly do you want to learn so if you want to take things slowly at a time if you want to learn these elements step by step you know build up your confidence that way then a five-week course is better if on the other hand you're saying actually I want to get out there and practice as much as possible I want to be thrown right at the end preparing speeches from the first week then the eight-week course is a better fit so there's different categories but once again come check us out pop into a taster class, uh, see how you feel about it, and then we can talk more about further training. Excellent, for sure. Well, give those a go, and yeah, let us know you get on, drop a comment, and we'll reply. Down here. Well, yeah, down here, <laughs> subscribe as well. Yeah, I'll subscribe so, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, somewhere. Right, everyone, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we want you to become more confident, of course, and, and bring across the overall message, I think, was coming through. through exactly, well. exactly. It's from the heart. From the heart. Be yourself. Don't let yeah. anyone, anyone take away that from you. You have your right to be yourself. Don't let anything in the world take that away from you. Be and yourself. on the stage, it is beautiful. When someone is fully letting everything out, Yeah. Um, that is amazing. Anything else, any sort of ego in the way, mask. <laughs> exactly. Say, it it's just distances no us. One relates to that. For sure. For um, sure. Okay, right. We'll see you soon. Peace, Peace out. Soon. Peace. Peace.